Okay, so we are back with uh, Dr. Glenn here, and we're going to try and keep this one to three minutes, but this is a hot topic for, um, for him too. And um, basically, so you, you've been coming to Dr. Sherry for how long now? I started with her in roughly September of 2016. Okay, and, and so... I took a break for, I don't know, eight months or a year or something, and then came back to her for some more stuff. Okay, and in that time, you've referred a lot of veterans yes. to her. Tell me about that. I started working with veterans in 1975, mm -hmm. and I've been working with veterans more recently for the last six, seven years, doing disability evaluations, mostly Iraq, Afghanistan guys, but going back to World War II. And I'm a psychologist, I believe in talk therapy, and I, you know, familiar with psychiatric medication, and the success rate of talk therapy for PTSD among com combat veterans, people who've been raped in the military, male and female, is approximately zero percent. And psychiatric medication for things like PTSD is about 0% success rate. And I've given up on both of them. And I was looking around for an alternative approach to help these people. And I came across some research done at Camp Pendleton, the Marine Corps base on the West Coast. And they had done some neurofeedback on combat veterans out there. And they had 75, 80% success rate. Wow. Which in psychology is as good as you get. That's, that, that's basically maxed out for success in psychology. Mm. And I started asking Dr. Sherry about it, and she told me she'd worked with a lot of veterans and had good results, and I started referring people to her as a result of that. Because okay. I wanted something else to do mm -hmm. to help them, because therapy and meds just do not work with them. So we'll talk about this for just one second, um, but what has, your, what has your experience been with those folks that have come back to you? The ones who have come to see her have been thoroughly impressed and very quickly helped. And one person in particular, a guy I sent to her a few months ago, was a Navy SEAL. And he had been in, in the SEALs forces, special operations for 20 years, and seen a ton of combat, and he had PTSD for all these years. He retired back in the 1990s. And he'd had PTSD since who knows when, 70s, 80s, 90s, I don't know when he got it. And he was not what I call a happy camper. Yeah, he was here in the 60s, right? This is a PTSD questionnaire that I gave him at the beginning of his seeing Dr. Sherry, and he had sky-high PTSD. And rule of thumb is scores over 33 are PTSD, and below that is lack of PTSD. And he went from a score of 60 on day one down to a score of 30, which is below the PTSD cutoff within three weeks. And at the three-week point, he said he was half improved. At the eight-week point, when he was down around a score of five or six, which is non-existent, I mean, it's, he had no more clinical symptoms at all, he said he was 95% improved. And after about 10 weeks, he said he was cured. And this is a list of some of his before and after um, self-observations. One of them was he was yelling at the superiors at work. He punched a guy at work in the nose. Um, he didn't want to be around other SEALs and other, you know, other Navy folks, and he had stacks of paperwork on his desk. He wasn't on his desk, and he wasn't getting things done. And after he finished the neurofeedback, he said he was calm at work. He was getting his work done. No more stacks of paper. Um, he was no longer feeling nervous, and he was just a whole lot happier. Yeah, he, and I mean, this was part of a program for this gentleman too. He didn't just do neurofeedback. He also made improvements to his diet and did a few other things, correct? Yes, diet's important and exercise is very important. Being a Navy SEAL, he has a whole lot of training about physical exercise. Yeah. Very gung-ho. <laughs> Those guys are in, he's in his 50s and he's, you know, he's still very trim and fit mm -hmm. and very exercise oriented and that makes a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you can't just do the neurofeedback and smoke cigarettes or, you know, eat McDonald's hamburgers and french fries and and not feed the body. You have to feed, feed the body, feed the brain, take care of yourself in all respects, not just do the neurofeedback and think it's going to do all the work for you. Yeah, but with, when it's part of a good, healthy program, I mean, the results that right. this man saw were fantastic. I mean, he'd been eating well and doing exercise before he came to Dr. Shear, and he still had neurofeedback. He still had PTSD, mm -hmm. and it was the neurofeedback which made the big difference. Mm -hmm. Awesome. On top of the healthy living. Awesome. Well, I hope that we can get this gentleman in at some point for a for an interview. Thank you so much. Thank you.